to church because they was at home sinning, heathen, calling you names. Why are you going to church again? Why are you doing anything? You, you, had to, you had to stay on your assignment. You had to press in. If someone is not interested in fulfilling their assignment, they're not interested in protecting yours. Don't be a stepping stone for somebody else. I've had people call and say, I want to be under your cover. Uh -uh. I got guys in Africa now, all over the world, they want to be under my cover. I said, I don't know you. He said, well, we can get to know each other on, over online. I said, no. I want to know who you is. Because when I accept to be your covering, then I got to deal with your devils. I ain't dealing with your devils right now. I'm too far away. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing in your church. <laughs> no, 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 no. And them devils come all the way from all, all the side of the world to fight me. I, I ain't fighting them. <laughs> a right mentor will develop your assignment and wrong mentors will control it. When you're out of your assignment, deception becomes rational. Error becomes probable. That's what happened to that prophet. He got out of his assignment and it became rational. Okay, I can go eat now because I'm going to get a message. I'm through now. I come on back out. Your assignment is important. I shared this with you before uh, when I took a team to India and we went to three different places in India. We flew. We went to keyboard, flew. The last city was Baroda up in the northern part <coughs> of India and uh, we were through. I taught prophetic activation. They were singing prophetically. They were prophesying. God did miracles. We had manifestations of God's glory, the testimonies how God came visit men in their houses and, and, and say, why are you persecuting me? And they gave to the church and stuff. And at the end, the guy, the host that would, had, was our host that was taking us through India, he was an Indian. He wanted us to take us to the Hare Krishna temple in that city, headquarters. Hare Krishna has a headquarters in India. And we were done with our assignment. We were through. We were just going to go. He said, well, let's go pray over there, you know, before we leave. And we got out the car, and the people looked at us. I mean, everybody stopped doing what they were doing. They just looked. They just stopped. They knew we were. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, get back in the car. I did not assign you to come and war against this spirit. And I told everybody, hey, y'all, get back in the car. We out of here. <laughs> we out of here. Amen. Don't mess with the sign. There's certain things you ain't supposed to go messing with. That ain't, my, ain't your battle and it's not your fight. So you just leave, leave it alone for somebody else to come along and fight. It wasn't that time to fight that, that stronghold. There's angels. And then I, as I learned later on in my trips and stuff, that everything that I do is logistics. There are angels assigned to me. There are angels overseas that meet with the angels assigned to me and logistics where I go and how I go and how I'm protected in the spirit realm. Because demons, uh, uh, you know, you got robbers or muggers and highwaymen. Uh, you got to be wise on your assignment. You can't be uh, uh, out there uh, uh, just doing what you want to do. So I, I listen to the Lord. I learn how to listen to the Lord real close. Amen. Amen. Go on your assignment. Know what you're supposed to do on your assignment. I had a, when I went to South Africa the one time, I mean, it was 20, 26 hours of traveling. Got there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And the host would say, I'll be there at 7 o'clock to pick you up. For service. I said, the devil is a liar. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I was tired. And that's the worst thing you can do with dealing with demons is be tired. And try to, do, try to walk in there and show how strong you are. I said, no, I'm going to sleep. You better find somebody else to minister today. I'll see you in the morning. I'm going to bed. You can't let people control you when you have an assignment from God. You got to know what God told you to do. And you got to protect that assignment. If someone... Uh, 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 let me go on. Your assignment will only flourish in the place where God leads you to. If you're in the wrong spot, it ain't going to flourish. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the Lord. It requires no skill to follow God's leading. It only requires skill to wait for him to lead. Ah. Wait on the Lord. God never gives you what you need. He'll lead you to it. And he gives it in a seed form. He's not going to give you. Well, I'm calling you to a ministry. He ain't going to give you no full-grown ministry. It's going to be a seed. See this one sheep? <laughs> They're your ministry. <laughs> Minister to that one. 
and you minister to that one. And that little one gets saved. Next thing you know, the little one brought the whole family in. And then the whole family say they gotta say. Then they start bringing more in. God always brings it in the seed form. It don't come. It don't come. Yes. Grown up. Yes. It ain't grown up. You gotta get. It's a seed, and you gotta work it, and you gotta till it, and you gotta water it, and you gotta work it, and then all of a sudden it expands. Because it was years and years that I, the first minute I said, Lord, is there any fruit gonna come from all this teaching and preaching? Because I ain't seen none. Folks were acting crazy and rebellious. Fighting in the prayer and in the, in, the, in the praise team, and everybody wanted to lead, and everybody getting mad at folks because I ain't leading and I didn't get a solo, and all kind of crazy stuff going on. And then I got this prophetic word from I forgot who it was from New York. He said, "God is calling you to tame these wild asses." I said, "Oh Lord, <laughs> they were wild." Never complain about something you're not trying to end. No, just sit there and complain about it. I hate this job. Well, why ain't you looking for another one? Why are you sitting there complaining about that job? <laughs> I can't stand this job. I don't like this job. Well, get your little self up and go find you another one. Sit there complaining. Never complain about somewhere you're not willing to leave. Your assignment was created and original. Don't try to copy. I'm just giving you some wisdom here. Don't try to copy somebody else. Mm -hmm. You asked me the other day, what's the difference between my church and Pat McManus? Yeah. What'd I tell you? With what? With you? Yeah. You said they didn't have the deliverance or something like that. I said the anointing. The anointing. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't a copy. They may do one thing their way, that's fine, but I do something different way. <laughs> I never judge your assignment, but others disagree with Never defend your assignment to someone who is a different one. That's their assignment. Never clone your assignment. Clones are simply lazy people that are too lazy to pay the price mm -hmm. to get what you got. That's good. That's good. We had that in the 80s and the 90s. If the pastor came in with a briefcase and a suit on, all the deacons and all the men in the church had a suitcase, <laughs> had a briefcase <laughs> and a suit on. A bunch of cones. If the pastor had a gold tee, all the men in the church had a gold tee. You look at Bishop Jake's church, all the men got a ball in. <laughs> they still do. <laughs> Your assignment will at time require you to move without support of others. Mm-hmm. When I moved, when, the, really, when we left the gymnasium and uh, we were building across the street there and trying to get, the, get it started and get it built, I literally had to carry the congregation on my shoulders because nobody had no faith for it. I literally worked 12 hours a day getting it done. There's times when people are not going to support you. But I know that was my assignment. I can understand how Noah felt when God told him to build that ark. Can you imagine he spent all his life building an ark that saved his soul? Mm -hmm. And I thought about it. You know what that ark is? Gone. All that labor. But it was worth saving his soul. But the ark was destroyed. His whole life was spent building an ark to save mankind. That's the cost. Yes. The strength of leadership is sometimes mentored by what you are forced to face alone. Now that's a pretty good big guy there. And this little guy got to face this big guy. But sometimes that's how it looks to you, that, that you're facing something so big, not realizing that you have more speed than that big guy. I've seen little guys tell big guys. <laughs> So it's not by how big it is, it's by your trust in God and the strength in God. Your strength of leadership is sometimes mentored by what you are forced to face by yourself. Gideon had to face by himself. The Bible says he was hiding his stuff. He was hiding his harvest in the, in the wine vat. Wine vat that day was built below ground. It was a cement pit. 
And they would put the grapes down and then crush the grapes. So he's down there hiding from the Midianites, <laughs> trying to get his little harvest in so they don't come steal his harvest. And God called him, hey, mighty man of valor, I've called you. Then he going to throw out the fleece, and then he gets the great, they got a great victory. Your assignment. Five-fold assignments. I'm almost done. Equip and perfect the saints for the work. Get the spots and wrinkles out of his bride. Lay foundations. Preach the kingdom of God. Deliver, heal the sick, preach salvation. Deal with the widow and the poor. I was watching a, a testimony last night over a uh, young girl. Got, uh, uh, finally got a job. She was in one of the little taxis in Africa. You know, the taxis, they, they can hold about eight, ten people. And she was in this taxi. And the taxi was dropping people off. And it got down to her and the old lady that was sitting in front of her. And the taxi driver made a turn that wasn't the route. He said, why is he turning here? This was not the route. And they stopped the taxi and threw the old lady out and kidnapped her. Oh, Raped her. And that was the first day. She was going to go to her first job. First, the first day. She was going to go. Raped her. She wound up being pregnant, then wound up getting AIDS from the rape. And she was just destroyed. I mean, just, and she said the child she had, she beat the child. She couldn't stand and look at the child. She was completely just devastated. But God called her out. And the prophet told her her whole history, her whole story. And God healed her of AIDS, healed her broken heart, delivered her from the spirits that are in there, and she forgave those that raped and molested her. That set her free. Now she's got her own dress shop, her own business. God will bring you from the pit to the palace. He's a merciful God. He sees everything that happens in our lives, everything that's done to us, and he wants us free. He don't want us bound up. That, that, that's a horrible, horrible thing to happen to people. Then another lady gave her testimony. She was an orphan. Her mother died. Then her father died. She was just young. She was only 15, 16 years old. Had no one to take care of her. So this old guy took her in, 75-year-old man took her in and allowed her to stay in a little shack, little room on the back end of her property, but she had to have sex with him every day. And she got pregnant. He had nowhere to go. And the church came and rallied around her and took care of her and bought her a place and opened her up a business. That's what the orphans this is when God talks about orphans and people. This is what the gospel is about. This is what your assignment is about. Those that are down where no one have no voice, no one speaks for them, no one can set them free, no one can help them, no one can deliver them. That's why you're in deliverance. See, I'm in deliverance not for me. I'm in deliverance for those that are hurting, those that are, that are in pain. There is a way out of that. Amen? There's an anointing to destroy that yoke. There's an anointing to destroy what happens to your life. God will erase everything. Everything. He will blot out every memory of what happened to you if you let him do it. Amen. I mean, there's nothing that God can't set you free from. There's nothing he won't set you free from. All you got to do is call on him. All you got to do is ask him. John, uh, Jesus, uh, in John 2.24, he said, but Jesus, for his part, he did not trust himself to them because he knew all men. When you've been called by God and on assignment to deliver his people, you don't trust no one but God. You listen to men, but you obey God. Listen to men, but okay. They can give you some wisdom, but I'm going to obey God. I'm going to go check with God. John 9, 4, we must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it's daylight. Night is coming on when no man can work. You can see how wicked and twisted and perverted the thinking of the nation is. And how, how they just marginalize Christians and marginalize God and you don't need God and, and transgender this and same sex this. It's all a lie from the pit of hell. All of these people that say they're lesbians, all of them have been molested or raped or abandoned by men and they turned and went to women. That's all it is. And some of them doing worse than what the men did. God will set them free from that. It's a spirit. We're not wrestling with flesh and blood. We're wrestling with principalities and powers and spirits in people. People that transfer demons to us and change our personality and all the kind of strange stuff start happening in your life because someone 
messed with you or abused you or, or did something.